As you know, Texan economic growth in the 21st century has been remarkable, even through the Great Recession. Those businesses that moved here and those businesses that started here created new jobs, created more competition for labor, which meant that salaries and wages went up, and all of that benefited Texans. Six million people moved here from other states. About a state about the size of Wisconsin moved here while Rick Perry was governor. But over the next 10 years, we're facing a threat to that story of Texas economic growth, something that could erode our living standards, and that's the rising cost of health care in Texas. We've had actually quite a bit of growth in average household income in Texas. The average household made $46,000 a year in 2008, and today the average household is making $59,000 a year. But here's the problem. A lot more of that take-home pay is being eaten up by the rising cost of health insurance. So if you take the rising cost of health insurance out of what the average Texan family makes, the growth story looks a lot different. Here's another way to think about it. Texan leaders, like Rick Perry, like to talk about how Texas compares to California. Actually, health insurance premiums in California and Texas are about the same. But here's the big difference. In Texas, the average employer passes on more of those costs to workers. So workers are paying more out-of-pocket for health insurance premiums and more out-of-pocket for deductibles and co-pays. Here's another way to think about it. If you add up all the taxes that Texans pay, state and local taxes, and Texan politicians are great about saying, hey, we're going to lower your taxes, we're going to do more to lower your taxes, and hey, I'm a taxpayer, I like to have low taxes too. But the average Texan pays about $4,000 a year in taxes at the state and local level. The average Texan family pays $19,460 a year in health insurance. And that out-of-pocket piece, as I mentioned, is more than double the tax burden of the average Texan. So we can lower taxes all we want in Texas, but at the end of the day, if health insurance and health care continues to cost more and more every year, it won't matter what the tax rate is in Texas. So what do we do about this problem? How do we take this $4 trillion national problem on and figure out how to reduce the cost of health care? Well, what are the biggest components of what we spend on health care? It's hospitals, it's doctors, and it's prescription drugs. And of those big categories, hospitals and drugs are growing the fastest because of monopoly power. Hospitals have become regional monopolies where they can charge whatever they want and patients and employers and employees pay it. Same with prescription drugs. That's why those two areas are growing more than any other. Here's another way to think about that. What Medicare and Medicaid pay the hospital industry has basically stayed constant. It's, it's basically moved with consumer inflation over the last 10, 15 years. But what Texans have paid hospitals who are privately insured, if you're a Texan and you're privately insured, what do you pay a hospital? It's 2.4 times what Medicare pays. And it's getting worse every year. So you can understand why so many people are now clamoring for Medicare for all. Because they look at charts like this and say, well, let's pay what Medicare pays and our health insurance will be cheaper. The problem with Medicare for all is that it will cost about $30 trillion with a T at the national level to implement. It will destroy a lot of jobs and reduce a lot of choices that people have in the way they get their health insurance or health care. So it sounds simple, but it's actually a very unattractive option when you get down to the details. The same is true with private insurance monopolies. So if we don't want the government to be a monopoly and give the bargaining power to the government, could we give it to private insurers? Well, yes, you could do that. You could create private insurer monopolies that then bargain with hospitals. But why would we want private insurers to have that level of power in our system? Instead of giving payers more power to bargain with hospitals, maybe we should reduce the market power of hospitals, create more competition among hospitals to deliver better care with higher quality and lower prices. There are ways we can do that. And most importantly, there are things that Texas can do to reduce the cost of hospital care. It's hard to do something about the uh, prescription drugs at the, at the state level. That really has to be done at the national level. But hospital prices are something that you can tackle at the state level. Texas legislators and the governor can do a lot to tackle the high price of hospital care. How would you do it? The first thing you would do is stronger and more effective antitrust. 
All these mergers that are happening, they're not getting enough scrutiny because those mergers are almost always leading to higher prices for consumers. Texas has the power and the authority to block local hospital mergers when Texas believes they will lead to anti-competitive pricing practices and higher prices for patients. Another thing we can do is have transparency into hospital prices. The hospital industry and the insurance industry are both, in many cases, opposing price transparency because they know that if the prices that hospitals charge become public, then the public will be mad about what hospitals are charging, and startup insurers will be able to come in and compete with the establishment and the incumbents to deliver a better deal for employers and patients. So this is something that patients should want. This is something that businesses should want. It's something that the industry doesn't want. The next thing we need to do is tackle the problem of anti-competitive contract provision. So this is a very wonky topic, but basically what happens is a hospital will insert all these clauses and provisions into the contracts they, they deliver to employers, to businesses, to insurers, and say, hey, if you use this rural hospital over here where we're the only game in town, you have to accept higher prices from our big city uh, hospitals in places like Austin and Dallas and San Antonio and Houston. And in that way, hospitals are, are using their market power, particularly the purchase of rural hospitals, to charge higher prices in the urban setting. And the last thing we can do is to simply say no to monopoly price exploitation. And what do I mean by that? We have a model in Medicare Advantage where if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, which is a private health insurance plan for the Medicare benefit, and you go to an out-of-network hospital, that hospital has to accept Medicare rates. You could do something very similar for the rest of the private market, where if you're out of network, you have to accept, say, Medicare Advantage rates. Or if you're in a monopoly setting where a certain hospital system owns all of a particular region and has monopoly pricing power as a result, instead of allowing that to happen, we say, you know what? No, you have to accept Medicare rates from all payers. And in that way, you create more ability for competition to play, and you also create more incentive for those hospital systems to divest into smaller units again and compete. Now look, I know that these solutions are going to be hard because the health insurance lobby, the hospital lobby, the drug lobby, these are all very powerful institutions in Texas and across the country. And so it's very hard to make these kinds of changes. But we cannot sustain a system in which the tax burden for the average Texan is $4,000 and health insurance is $19,000. And if we want the opportunity of bringing more businesses to Texas, in the future and raising living standards for Texans, this is the kind of problem that we have to take on. If you want to learn more about our health reform solutions and our research on health care policy, please go to our website. It's freeop.org. Our health care reform program is called Affordable Health Care for Every Generation.